If you are over the age of 35, stop everything you're doing right now. After a lifetime of eating fatty foods, you may run the risks of a stroke or heart attack due to plaque buildup in your veins and arteries. To learn how you can reduce your risks, visit youthfountainlab.com or call 1-800-853-7856 today. This may be a life-changing call for you or someone you love. Thank you, and we hope to hear from you. So you have a school in Mead, Colorado. Now this particular city is about 85% of Mzungu. So in this particular school in that city, um, they had to launch an investigation after an image showed up of a group of students uh, reenacting the death of George Floyd. Um, they said that the image first you know, surfaced on Snapchat. It said that it showed three students enacting the death on school grounds and while one student is posing in blackface, um, in, in this photo and these photos are readily available, you know, uh, brother Sharif, you can put those photos up so people can see exactly, you know, what these people are doing. Like I told you before, um, it's a culture, you know, by now it's, it's not something that's just a fad. Like I said, you've been doing this sort of thing for hundreds and hundreds of years. It, it's in the culture. Now, am I saying all of them are doing it? I'm not saying that, but I'm saying a lot of them do practice that culture. Now they said the school said it was made aware of the highly offensive photo taken on school grounds and posted on social media. It did not reflect their school's uh, high standards of respect and character and inclusivity. Okay. But you know, people that used to go to the school said this is nothing new whatsoever. Um, this sort of thing been going on at that school, um, for a very, very long time. Um, they said the principal, he never really did anything about it at all. They said that one uh, person said, a parent who spoke to um, a local media said that my son said lots of racist things happened there. It said there, there's a lot of Mzungu hicks that go there. Now those are the words of the words and the most ignorant. And they said that they said, uh, but that principal never does anything about it. Now an alumni also said four years ago, we were dealing with race in the school too. It said anything like this should not be tolerated by anybody. So the superintendent, like I said, he got involved, you know, with the situation as well. But you know, there were kids that did protest this and all the kids were white kids that protested this. Um, and they had black lives matter signs, etc. But let me tell you this, even when you, it's a town of 85% of them and it's hardly any of us, we live rent free in their minds. Like, think about that. You know, I mean, I don't be sitting up here thinking about, you know, something bad happening to one of them and I'm going to reenact it or look at what happened to our sister, Sasha Johnson. They're up here celebrating it, uh, feeling that's a good thing that happened, hoping the sister died. I mean, we, I mean the, the, the depravity of the white supremacists, you understand? But we report these stories because we just want you to, to understand what's going on. We, maybe some brothers or sisters live in these areas. And sometimes, you know, I've had many of you come in and tell me, man, I didn't even know that happened in my city. That wasn't even on the local news. You understand what I'm saying? So we want to make sure that, you know, you know what's going on in these schools and, and protect your kids at all times. That's why I'm a firm believer of us creating our own schools or if we can homeschool, we protect our children so much better that way. But leave me a comment. Let me know think about the situation with this story. I mean, like I said, you know, we, we covered one, what, maybe two weeks ago, the exact same thing. You know, like I said, it's in the culture, folks. In search of a financial opportunity to pay off student loans, a young black American woman moves to South Korea to work. As the author, Bootsy W, recalls culture shock and fun adventures in a country far from home. She's also faced with anti-black racism and featureism, quickly learning that white supremacy is practiced not only by whites, but by those that are categorized as people of color. Based on her 10 years of living abroad, the book, Ego Igo, compares and contrasts Korea versus the United States on subjects such as code, communal living, racism, effective protests, global alliances, warrior class, music, political correctness, health, aging, money, and the coronavirus. This blunt memoir is uncomfortable, humorous, and educational. Help fight propaganda and mainstream agendas by picking up a copy of Ego Igo on Amazon.com. 
Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the African Diaspora News Channel app in the Google Play and Apple App Store.